committee members present, uh, myself, Councilor Dina Talley, President Kushmera, Councilor Donnelly, Councilor Joseph, also present, Councilor Clark. Uh, we will start with 50-17, petition to ratify and confirm the following attached documents, payment in lieu of taxes, Ashby One Solar Project Company, LLC, and NCM Realty Trust, payment in lieu of taxes, Ashby Two Solar Project Company, LLC, and NCM Realty Trust, Power Purchase Agreement with Ashby One Solar and Power Purchase Agreement with Ashby Two Solar. Uh, the Mayor's Chief of Staff, Terigny, is here speaking on this. Uh, good evening, Councillors. Happy spring with the 80 degree weather. Uh, for the record, my name is AJ Terigny, Chief of Staff to the Mayor. And with me uh, this evening is Ben Axelman. Uh, he's a representative of NEXAMP and he's been a uh, great uh, working partner these past several months. Uh, doing these two solar arrays, and he'll certainly be able to elaborate a little bit more than I can this evening on on these uh, two projects. Uh, Next amp is installing two solar arrays off of Ashby State Road. Um, they're going to be producing, one's going to be producing roughly 800,000 kilowatts, and the other one's going to be close to 700,000 kilowatts. Um, and the city is entering into a power, power purchase agreement uh, to accept some of the um, um, uh, net metering credits from them, and we will recognize roughly a thirty uh, for the first, for the second project, a thirty-seven thousand dollars saving, and the second project a thirty-two thousand dollars saving each year for the next twenty years. Uh, the reason why this this is before you this evening is we need approval from the city council because we're entering into a contract that's more than three years. This is a a twenty-year contract, so that's for the two PPAs. The pilots are uh, payment in lieu of taxes. Uh, that we worked um, uh, we worked on with our city assessor, as well as our solar consultant uh, for both projects. Um, we're going to be receiving a 20% discount on uh, these on the net metering credits, uh, which is evaluating to the 32 and 37 thousand dollar savings uh, for for over the next 20 years. I'm not sure if there's something else you would like to add. Uh, no, this is to. sure. Um, so my name is Ben Axelman. I work with Nexamp. Nexamp's a company based out of Boston. Uh, this is actually our second uh, round of projects in, in Fitchburg. Uh, the first one is the project off of Pearl Hill Road, which we uh, built uh, last fall and recently came online. Uh, that project, we were not selling uh, net metering credits to the city, but we did enter into a pilot uh, for that project as well. Uh, that project is now operating. That project and these projects are community solar projects, meaning that we are selling 50% of the output of the projects to um, individual households, small businesses in 25 kilowatt or less blocks. And then the remainder is being sold, uh, in these cases, to the city of Fitchburg, uh, which allows us to use the credit rating of the city to essentially fi finance and build these projects. Um, we're expecting the projects to wrap up construction within the next month and a half, uh, and then be connected to the grid probably by the end of the summer once the Unitil completes their upgrades. Um, and once that's in place, uh, the project will start generating and you'll start receiving net metering credits at a 20% discount for the life of the project, or for 20 plus years. Council Donald. Thank you. Is this, this project's in Fishburg? Yeah. Yes, Why sir. is it called Ashby Sola? Uh, it's on Ashby State Road. Uh, this, we actually acquired this project from another developer um, and uh, a company called Socor. Um, so it was their naming convention. I wouldn't have picked that, but they've been calling them Ashby 1 and 2 Solar this whole time. I'm only bringing it up because we talk about marketing Fitchburg so often. Yep. Yeah, understood. And, and, we, and we don't. And we go along with it. Yep. Uh, the, the biggest money raiser in Fitchburg calls it Central Mass, you know, we, we, we just don't market Fitchburg. Sure. Um, the, love the project, mm -hmm. don't like the title. Fair enough. For what it's worth, the first project that we built is Fitchburg Solar. Yeah. <laughs> Think so. about it. Thank you. <laughs> Motion to approve uh, 5017. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 5017. Speaking on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. Thank, Thank you very much. Councillor Boschman has joined the meeting. 5817, order that the City of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from the Community Compact Cabinet Grant administered by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. 
in the approximate amount of $20,000 for the preparation of an economic development strategic plan. Economic Development Director Bohart. Hello, counselors, and thank you. Um, I've given you copies of uh, a couple of pieces that will sort of explain how this funding came to be for us. When the city signed the Commonwealth's Community Compact Pledge, and that happened um, uh, in the, I believe it was March of last year, um, we picked three areas that we were going to focus on for dramatic improvement and concerted uh, efforts. And one of them was an economic development uh, topic. And in, in this case, when on your sheet, it's described as jobs creation and retention. But when you read through the verbiage from the Commonwealth's uh, Committee Compact, what essentially it does is it says that we are going to embark on an economic development strategic plan, something that we didn't have and something that we will have. And so uh, the Commonwealth then, because we took that pledge, made available to us grant monies to fund that plan. And they also went a step further, and they paired us with, um, in this case, UMass Boston's Collins Center as the consultant who would then uh, provide um, uh, the services as we embark on crafting this plan. And um, I, I learned uh, through the auditing office that in March, uh, the funding did come through. Um, in this case, it came out of administration and finance um, in the sum of $20,000. And so I gave you a little copy of that. And any questions you might have on the work, I can describe the scope and so on. Councillor Boschman. It says here, um, educational. When you say educational, are we going to talk about uh, skills for the people in this community? Workforce development is a big part of what we're going to be mapping out. So I hope that answers kind of what you're concerned about, which is this isn't just how we want to grow our economy, but tending to our workforce and the job training skills and identifying what areas we need to focus on for that. Is that what you were asking about? Well, I'm talking about vocational skills. Like, you know, you know there's, there's painters and there's painters. A painter, there's a good painter, and I just said myself, this is an average painter. They put paint up there and get runs on it, and you think you did a marvelous job, and there's a guy that can do a marvelous job, and you think he, he sprayed it, but he didn't. He can paint really good. I'm using that for an example. Sure. Maybe it's a piss poor example, but it's an example. Sure. I'm talking about skilled trades where they can come and earn money, good money. Not $11 an hour, not $12 an hour, maybe $18, $20, $25 an hour. So, so to answer your question, um, workforce development or job training skills, as you describe, is kind of goes hand in hand with the crafting of an economic development strategy. So that will be addressed. That will be addressed. Councilor Bezel has joined the meeting. President Kushmerik. Uh, Ms. Bohart, I'm curious about uh, the actual deliverables that they'll give us. Will they give us a number of recommendations? Will they hand the plan over to you, or is this a, uh, here's a number of observations with possible remedies, and you decide what the plan is? And through, through you? Um, there are two deliverables, uh, tangible deliverables, that we will receive. The first one is a, sort of, I guess you could call it an economic snapshot, and that tells us kind of who we are at the moment and what we were kind of looking in the rearview mirror, because as you think about our economy as it was historically, as it is presently, and as uh, where we aspire to go, it, th that's part of why they're doing a snapshot. Um, and so that's one of the deliverables. The other deliverable is actually the Economic Development Strategic Plan, the document itself. But the document, in a lot of ways, is simply documenting the process, the public process we will be going through with outreach meetings, with the business community, with the community at large, in various geographic areas of our city to make sure that everybody has a chance to kind of uh, air their views and so on. So, yes, we will end up with a document. Um, they're not intended to be plans on the shelf, um, and uh, they help to guide us. But one of the things, the new thinking in these types of economic development plans is that they need to be more nimble and more responsive because, as we've observed, the economy uh, changes and new types of fields come up and industries change. So, a plan that identifies things that are known now but doesn't leave open-ended some uh, ways that we can embrace new types of things that may come up even five years from now isn't as of much use to us. So, so, so it will be a document that will enable us to use it moving forward. 
how will this, if at all, um, complement or supplement a future you know, Vision 2020 plan, uh, urban development and renewal plan? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so um, the Economic Development Strategic Plan and, um, and, and the content that results in that plan will largely then become the economic development element, if you want to, or chapter, if you want to call it that, when we refresh our comprehensive plan for our city, and it has a number of different what we call elements or chapters, the economic development element would be this. And so, so we're kind of getting a head start on that overall comprehensive planning kind of update uh, by starting with the economic development topic. Thank you. Council Donnelly. Thank you. So we under operate, are we under, are we operating under an economic development plan now? And if we are, where are we? We, we do not currently have such a plan. That's not something that this city has crafted in its past. So this is something new for us. What we did have, we do still have, is our Vision 2020, the comprehensive plan for our city. It has an economic development element or chapter, if you want to call it that. And you can, you can see the kinds of goals and the kinds of, um, uh, the kinds of areas that we wanted to improve the city were outlined. But it was also crafted in 2000. So here we are 17 years later, and a lot of things have changed. Um, we haven't had an economic development strategic plan for the city before. That's not something that we've had before. Um, what we've had is a comprehensive plan that had an economic development section. Well, I'll say that the plan was crafted substantially before 2000. It was adopted in 2000. So. Okay. Thank you. Council Joseph. Just, I don't have a schedule in front of me. What is, like, time from beginning to end for the project? The, the, work, the work effort will be approximately five months, possibly a little bit longer. So basically the remainder of spring and into the summer. Um, and, and that is kind of a typical uh, time frame. This particular consultant has worked with a number of municipalities through the community compact, and that's about the time frame that um, these projects have taken. So we would uh, expect that come the tail end of the summer, uh, we will now we would be on the early stages of having a draft version of that plan. Before this summer. Not before the summer. So the spring, yeah. the months we're in now, and then through the summer months, by about <clears throat> September, early September, we should have um, a, a draft version of the plan. Okay, and, the, and then the plan includes um, implementation. So There will be implementation measures described in the plan. What we then do as we implement it simply moves forward from that moment. Okay, I, I just... I remember the last time we got a plan from some outside group, and basically they told us a lot of the things that we already knew about purchasing or something like that, and we really didn't. I don't know if we ever really changed a lot of things. Um, so I just hope that they give us some meaningful things, some things that we might be overlooking, and some things that we can do that's measurable so we can make sure we got our twenty thousand dollars worth absolutely and um i would say that that's my goal because i'm going to be working closely all throughout we don't want something that doesn't um, open our eyes and take us in new directions we don't I mean, we we do want something that does that we don't want something that's much of a repeat of what we had um from before and also it needs to be and and these are kind of cliches but a living breathing type document it needs to be adaptable if new opportunities come up after the plan is completed, we don't want to be sort of high and dry. We want to be able to adapt as opportunities come up. Okay. Motion to approve 5817. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 5817. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It was unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. 5917, order that there be and hereby is appropriated $9,810 to be charged against available funds and credited to DPW Highway General Expenses right-of-way takings for the purposes of paying damages incurred by constituents and property owners in connection with the Summer Street, North Street Row Improvement Project. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, Councilors. Once again, for the record, my name is A.J. Terigny, uh, Chief of Staff to Mayor Dinatelli. Um, unfortunately, this evening, um, 
we are at the mercy of four public meetings all at the same time. So I'm here representing uh, the, the city solicitor as well as the DPW commissioner um, on this particular item. Uh, this is for the cell street takings uh, project that the uh, city solicitor and DPW commissioner have been working on for some time. South Street? Summer Street. Oh, I'm Summer sorry, street. Summer street. street. My apologies. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, right. Summer Street. Uh, you had, the, the council had originally um, approved a $50,000 um, order for the cost of damages for the takings. Um, we have uh, heard back from the appraiser, and he, that $50,000 was based on an estimate that he provided. And since, and since that estimate, we've, we've had the actual appraisals done, and we're looking at a $9,810 increase. Um, again, this project has already been uh, approved by the council. The MassDOT is uh, paying for the project. The city is res uh, res responsible for the, uh, the, the takings, and, and thus the, the 59810 to be in full. Council Bezal. Uh, thank you. So basically speaking, we... When, the, when you came before us before, this this was the shortfall of the total. That's correct. All right. So this is Amendment. this is it. Yep. Okay. This is correct. That's correct. Thank you. Is there any reason why we didn't just wait until the final? Before we. I, I unfortunately I don't know the specifics on that, but. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm I'm not questioning the request. I just I think, that's, I don't know I think why that was the intention, and then I, I think a few estimates were off. Okay. Uh, President Kushmerik, uh, am I correct in understanding this would be the final appraisal, and this this value That's uh, is very unlikely to change from this point forward? Yes, sir. Okay, That's it. a uh, motion to approve uh, fifty nine seventeen. Second, second. Motion made and seconded to approve fifty nine seventeen. Speaking on the motion, Councilor Joseph. Yeah, it's just uh, when they came with us the original appraisal, I think the fifty thousand dollars had a five or six thousand dollar buffer in it. And that's why they, they thought $50,000 was going to be enough and a buffer. I, I believe that was what Vinny told us when he came to us last time, and obviously it wasn't enough. Um, but this project is moving forward, and this is there's yes, no, nothing else contested? No, sir. Okay. Not at this time. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Bean has joined the meeting. 6017 order that they're being hereby is appropriated $25,000 to be charged against available funds and credited to law expenses, litigation, and special counsel for the purposes of paying expenses and attorney and expert fees in connection with the city's insurance claim for loss due to the fire at B.F. Brown Middle School. Mr. Trigney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, counselors, unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to elaborate more on to this peti uh, petition. I can tell you that this petition is a product of an executive session that the council had a few months back uh, in reference to B.F. Brown. Uh, this will assist the city solicitor uh, to move forward with uh, whatever was a result of that executive session. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 6017. Council Joseph. I just legally, when does something become public when you're spending money for it or at what point? If things were done in executive session, if sooner or later it has to. Council, it does say that it, it, this, this particular line item it does say in it that it's for litigation and special counsel. Okay. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm good. I, I just have a question. I mean, sure. I don't think the question would warrant a violation, but just Please for do. the public's consumption, sure. is there a reason why we need special counsel? Is uh, there are there expert yes, attorneys it, that we interest. cannot provide ourselves that these we need a specialist to, to deal with this counsel. matter? There, it's my understanding that. Uh, this particular practice of law is um, um, much much above a a uh, I don't want to say our it's it's a difficult place for um, litigating I guess you could say uh, and it does require special counsel. Okay. Uh, motion was made and seconded to approve sixty seventeen. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, counselors. 7917, petition to update building department fees by adding the chapter 94-1. Uh, 
the following items, inserting the following solar, $10 per panel, including building and electrical permits. To strike Chapter 94.3 in its entirety, insert the following, 94.3D, unless otherwise noted, fees shall be based upon national average cost of construction for the type and use of the building according to the most current RS, RS means. means cost estimating bulletin and calculated by the building inspector. To strike Chapter 149.5 and insert the following, 149.5 permit fee, the fee for the permit required by Section 149-3 of this chapter shall be per Section 94-2 sign fees. Commissioner Lanciani. Good evening, Council. Thank you. Just to go through these, there's three separate sections of the code that we're addressing. Uh, the first section to, in, to add a specific fee for solar installations. Uh, our current ski fee schedule has nothing in it for solar. Uh, so we're charging a building permit fee and an electrical fee. And some of the solar installers have been playing games, to be blunt, with the way they're valuing their work. Uh, we've looked at other communities, uh, and most communities, and the, the solar companies have so told us that the way that they're, we're not going to be beaten by them playing games is to set a certain fee per panel. Uh, typical installations cost about $1,000 a panel to install. Uh, but some of them are now playing lease games and other things and telling us systems that a year ago were costing $30,000 to install, they're now trying to say that they're only seven or $8,000 in value, for example. So we're losing value. You know, it's costing the city more to go do an inspection than we're collecting because they've adjusted how they're calculating their fees. Uh, Lemonster charges 22, Lemonster values each panel at $1,200. They charge $22 for the first thousand, $7 for each thousand thereafter to cover both fees. So we looked at that. We kept ours a little bit lower than theirs, but we've set up a standard fee. It's much easier for all of them to calculate. You're putting 20 panels on the roof, it's 20 times seven. There's your fee, and it covers every you know building and electrical. Uh, the ninety-four-three section of the current amendment cites a a cost estimating publication that's no longer in existence. The former Boca Code Councils used to do a yearly cost estimating that hasn't been in existence for a few years. This would just update it to a current, a book that's widely used. The assessors use RS means when they're trying to value work. So we're trying to standardize with them to use a book that is in existence and has some national standard. RS means is also has a lot of local geographic factors so we can look at what it would actually cost in Fitchburg, not just Boston or other places. So it's a, it, it would give us a tool to fairly evaluate construction coming in. Again, we have people buying a house and coming in and telling us they're doing a gut rehab for $20,000. If I try to compare that to a catalog that doesn't exist to see the real values, I can't. This will give us a tool to look at the actual fair market value and be able to charge appropriately. The third one, the fees for signs. Currently in the city code, there's 149.5. And there's uh, 94.2. There are two different sections that have sign fees. Since I've been here seven years, there's been a building department fee that we've been charging all along. But if you look through the code, there is a, a 149.5 that says that the city council will set the fees, and that fee is set at a dollar. For us to evaluate whether a sign meets codes and is allowed to be there and then send someone out to inspect any foundations and whatnot, we can't do that for a dollar. So I'm saying let's use the one fee that is commensurate with the cost of the work. Thank you. Council Joseph. Just as a comparison, is it for, the, for the solar, is that commercial and residential? That's any. 
solar project. Yes. Okay, so if, if I have solar panels on my house, I don't know what I got charged for a building fee. Okay. Is, what would a normal? Did it go by the size of the kilowatts or? No, uh, in the past it's gone by what the contractor told us the value of the project was. Okay. And since they've been coming to Fitchburg, they've been. If you looked at the average, they were about a thousand dollars a year. There are two companies that are have currently. They tried it in other states, saying that the value of it was next to nothing. Okay. And they got away with it, and they brought it to Massachusetts. They're just trying to beat our fees. Okay. So it's really not changing anything. It's just standardizing it so that we we know what we're getting. Yes. Okay. Council Bezo. Um I think you might have already answered my question, but because I can't understand, if I'm going to lease a building, someone builds me a building, and I'm going to lease it. It doesn't change the value of the building, even though I'm going to lease it. Wouldn't this be like the same thing? It doesn't change the value of the panels just because they're being leased. The no, but it doesn't. But they're they're not telling the homeowner or the city the fair market value of that installation. Okay. They're telling the homeowner. And we'll get a 50-page document now that doesn't tell the homeowner anything for what the true value of that project is or the city. Okay. Thank you. Okay. President Kushmark. Uh My question is with regards to the uh, the new the signage um, permit fee. Uh, you said the fee is currently a dollar. What, what would it be now under the new system? In the 94-2. Two. The sign fees are seven dollars per thousand value of work with a minimum permit fee of fifty dollars. Okay. Just like any other building permit fee. Oh, okay. It's been there since I've been seven years it's been there. But there have been two different sections. The one where you set it at a dollar and we've set it at fifty no, seven dollars per thousand. I absolutely agree with making it consistent. Uh how often do we get these these applications? What's the kind of volume you receive? Um I had ballpark. I'm not going to hold you to it. <laughs> I had three or four last week. Okay. I've had. I know there's a couple that have come in this week. It, sign permits in Fitchburg are good for five years. Sure. So any sign that's over five years old, they're supposed to get another permit for. But we don't chase it. We don't have the manpower. When a, someone comes in to put up a new sign, we charge a one-time fee. How often does it typically take to? Um to go through the permit application and to, to inspect? The issuing a permit, it's an order they come in, but evalu most signed permits, it's an hour of time okay. to do the permitting, and then it's one site visit. Sure. Some signs, mm -hmm. the family dollar sign, they put it in wrong, they had to take it out, redo it, so there were... <laughs> sure, understood. And, and the reason I ask is uh, everyone who um, who has a current application in now under the one dollar scheme, if they no were, one has had oh, one no in one's for under okay. the dollar since understood. I've been here. Okay. When they come to the building department, and they get a permit, the building department permit form for signs. We've always charged them. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Joseph, does does this include the flag signs? Those things? No, this doesn't include the pennant flag type signs. Okay. This is Motion to approve 079-17. Second. I, I had Council Boschman's hand up. I apologize. I'll rescind my, uh, my motion. You did it on purpose. <laughs> I, did, I did not, sir. <laughs> Council Boschman? No, that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, answer my question. Motion to approve 079-17. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve 79-17. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.